The sword is probably one of the most widely recognized symbols in historical combat. In this episode, we're going to explore some innovations of sword history and examine what are the top five coolest swords. Now, this is just a personal favorites list. I'm sure you all will have different opinions and I would love to hear them. I'm also not really looking at variations of the standard sword either. There've been many blade shapes, makes, styles, scimitars, and ornate decorations. But rather in this video, we're gonna take a look at a few swords and derivatives that try to go past the standard form and attempt to think outside the blade with unique innovations. So we now present the top five coolest swords. We're going on sheer creativity here. The effectiveness and efficiency of the following weapons is definitely up for debate, and there is some historical context to go along with them as well. So, here we go. The Nine Ring Daito is a Chinese broadsword popular in some styles of Kung Fu. The sword pretty much looks standard at face value, except for the set of nine rings embedded in the spine of the blade. There are many discussed and debated reasons for these rings. The first is, the swords themselves are generally lightweight and the rings offer a strategic shift in weight. When the sword is held upright, the rings point downwards towards the hilt and shift the center of gravity closer to the hand, easier to move it. Now in contrast, when swinging the sword outward, the rings will swing outward, adding additional striking power to the swing. Now there's also the element of distraction, and those rings make an awful racket when swinging it around. It's like fighting against a giant deadly tambourine. The sound is often accompanied by tassels or long banners that are attached to the sword, offering further distraction. Another debated reason is back in these times, there were many, many soldiers to arm in China, and a lot of the swords were made generally pretty cheaply. Now this would result in dull and chipped blades after little use. So one theory is that these rings would assist in wearing down an opponent's blade when parrying, or even perhaps catching the tips of other swords and spears as they slid down the blade. And then we have the nine. The significance of nine rings mirrors the lucky number of nine in Chinese culture. This Egyptian weapon resembles a sickle and dates to as far back as 2500 BC. They aren't terribly large and a few varieties exist, but these swords are typically swung in a hacking motion, similar to an ax. Only the outer edge of the curved blade is sharpened and can cause powerful and deep lacerations. The rest of the sword is dull, but good for blunt striking and shaped to be effective at hooking. Many pharaohs are depicted in records and art as possessing these blades, possibly suggesting ceremonial or honorary applications of the kopesh as well as combat. And as an interesting note, in my research, I came across a lot of videos online of people forging their own versions of the Kopesh. So it seems to be quite popular among sword enthusiasts and blacksmiths. It's a compact and creative choice. As we fear far away from the standard metal blade, we come to the Aztec tool of war, the Makawidal. The sword is far from your traditional variety. It is made primarily of wood, and instead of sporting a metal blade, it is embedded with a dozen or more sharpened obsidian stones. Now, obsidian is volcanic glass, and it can be sharper than high-quality razor blades. So, this dances on the line of qualifying for a sword or not, but regardless, there's no question of its nastiness. Wielded like a sword, but swung like an ax, the Makawidal was designed to inflict several wounds in a single swing. Unlike a traditional sword, which leaves a straight, single, clean, and deep gash, the obsidian teeth of actually bury themselves with the opponent and then rip away as it's pulled along the skin. As a result, wounds were not clean, but often jagged and torn, often past the point of treating. These cuts weren't always as deep as traditional blades, but there is no question of the damage it could inflict upon bare skin. The hook swords, often called the tiger hook swords, are a Chinese weapon traditionally associated with northern style kung fu, but has also popularly spread into southern styles as well. History and usage on the sword is debated. The lack of records documenting its use among military personnel suggests that the sword was primarily a civilian weapon. Now, it sports a rather unique and intimidating design. The elongated spine of the weapon is used traditionally as a sword would be, while the hooked end is effective at catching limbs, hooking armor, as well as catching and tripping an opponent. The hilt extends to a sharpened blade, and the hands are protected by a crescent-shaped design. Even more unique is that the swords are often used in the pair, and sometimes they are hooked loosely together at the end and swung around, extending the combatant's reach an additional few feet. It's a very unpleasant thought when remembering that sharpened hilt. So the hook swords definitely are a cool and stylish mark, 
that are left in the martial arts history. And finally, we come down to the Arumi, one of history's coolest and most unique type of swords, in my humble opinion. The first thing one will notice is the blade, or rather the lack of one. Instead of a typical rigid metal structure, the Arumi consists of a soft whip-like metal blade. Now, this weapon is an advanced part of several styles of Indian martial arts, and it requires a lot of skill to use properly. Resembling both a whip and a sword, practitioners are required to master the skill of both, and the Arumi is typically reserved for advanced students. It is often worn in a coil around the warrior's waist, like a belt, with the hilt positioned at the side like a traditional sword. When in use, the sword is swung around like a flail, but the weight and momentum of its metal whip is enough to inflict significant damage. Now, different varieties of the Arumi exist, sometimes with just a single blade, but other times it sports multiple blades, giving quite a dangerous display of metal storm. Quick to use, hard to see, and effective at 360 degree combat, the Urumi is often effective against multiple attackers, and in my opinion, the coolest entry on this list. I would also like to throw out an honorable mention to the Japanese seven branch sword. Now, this sword consists of a long center shaft with six protruding bladed branches. Now, there's a strong debate as to the effectiveness of this weapon, and it's question was if it's ever used in combat or if it was just strictly honorary or ornamental is, is up for debate. Now, in any case, it's definitely worth a quick nod of acknowledgement to its ingenuity and creativity, even if specimens that they have are brittle. So there we have it, the top five coolest swords. Thank you so much for watching, and I would love to hear if you agree with this list or if you have other suggestions that you feel I left out. So please be sure to share and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.